Hey everyone, I'm Trevor and today we're back at the San Diego Zoo because the pandas are back and we're gonna share with you everything that you need to know about how to see them. So let's get going. We arrived at the zoo at 8.30 this morning. It is a Friday, uh, so it's a weekday and there's only just a couple of cars here already. Um, and so we got here really early because we've heard that there is a panda craze. We also came on a weekday as it's the last possible weekday before the kids go back to school. So we, we wanted to take advantage. I just wanted to document this for any who are curious and want to know what you know time you should arrive in the morning. We, we weren't sure ourselves. The zoo does not open until nine o'clock, so people are just gonna mostly be hanging around. But from what I've heard, in order to see the pandas, you have to sign up for a virtual queue, and there's a QR code once you get in. So uh, it's like first come, first serve. But it does look like that QR code is located outside here, so you don't actually have to get in first. You can just get here and sign up for that virtual queue. I'm already doing it. Amy's already actively I'm doing it. 9.45 to 10. 9.45 to 10, perfect, okay. Panda Ridge opens at 9.30. So even though the zoo opens at nine, Panda Ridge does not open until 9.30. So since the Panda Ridge area opens at 9.30 and we got 9.45, we actually got a really early time. And again, we showed up a half an hour before the zoo opens. Even so, it does look like the zoo is actually already open and letting guests in. I am so excited to be back at the zoo. Can you tell what Benjamin is excited to see today? <laughs> Can you stop moving for a second? I'm trying to back away. There we go. <laughs> He's got his panda hat, his panda. He's got his panda shirt. Look at the cute little pandas in the pocket. This boy loves his pandas and we are so Daddy, excited to be Daddy, here. To, what? Whoa, Benjamin, look at that. Lots of pandas. So uh, even though they let us in here, there's actually, you see that rope across the path and the rope goes all the way over here. So uh, they have a rope drop at the San Diego Zoo. I don't think I've ever been here early enough for a rope drop at the zoo. I wanted to take a look at the new updated map, or at least make sure it was updated, and indeed it is. Panda Ridge is listed on here. They're located in the same place that they were the last time we had pandas, like, uh, what, six years ago or so? I think that might have been the last time we had them. If you are familiar with where they were located before, they are that way again. And in the 4D theater, it appears they have a new panda show called Voyage to the Moon. It is an extra cost, $8 per person. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's gonna be located over um, by the other Sky Fari station and the polar bear exhibit. We thought we'd come into the store and check out some of the panda stuff while we're waiting for the rope to drop. Here's his shirt, it's $28.95. Oh, Ginger. the baby panda. Kim Benjamin Jim. has a baby panda Kim just like Jim. this. Probably got it here. Kim um, Jim. That uh, they he calls Kim Jim, which is the name of the little stuffed animal on Bluey. If Kim you've never Jim. seen Bluey, Kim it's like the greatest Jim. cartoon Jim. ever. Um, <laughs> and so wow. Daddy, this is it. this is what he calls Kim Jim. And look at this one. Ooh, does that one have pajamas on? A, a shirt, Christmas. a San Diego Zoo shirt. Yeah, a San Diego Christmas. Oh, a Christmas shirt. Amy said she likes the water bottle. It says Liberty on the bottom. And, I love and it. Uh, oh, there's the San Diego Zoo logo on the back. Oh, Liberty must be a brand. Now on the opposite, uh, Amy found Yeti water bottles. It looks like they've got blue, Daddy, pink, and red. I found it. And. Uh, this is what they have. What's the price on these? Oh, these ones are $44.95. Benjamin would like you to see the magnets. I like the one where they're on the San Diego Zoo bus tour. They have a Skyfari one too. They have a Skyfari one? Oh, that one is super yeah. cute. I and like I the Skyfari one. one. Price $8.95. Wish you were here. So I just saw this shirt and I was interested because it's just a plain San Diego Zoo logo shirt with a dark gray. They usually had light gray, but I prefer darker gray. And then I flipped it around to see the back and lo and behold, it's a panda shirt. 
Super cool. But I really, really like this panda shirt. This is a very thin material. That's very nice. Hair. This is a super nice shirt. So super cute. nice. You do realize if you wore that, Benjamin wouldn't stop hugging you all the time? <laughs> I'm trying to find a price for it. Woo! No thanks. Half of our kids' stuffed animals come from the zoo here. So James has that rhinoceros and that giraffe. <laughs> What's your uh, rhinoceros's name? Chevy. <laughs> Four minutes before rope drop and quite a crowd has accumulated here now. We did check the virtual queues and you can still get them for 10 a.m. So they haven't disappeared super duper fast. We'll keep an eye on them as the morning goes on to let you know exactly when they disappeared. But again, this is a Friday, not a Saturday. So I'd expect it to be busier on the weekends. Uh, never mind. So in the last five to ten minutes since we checked, it's gone to 10.30 now. So uh, it's, it's go not even nine o'clock yet, and the first hour is gone. Then here the crowd goes, but we're going to stand here and let the crowd disperse a little bit. I don't need to be in that herd. You see all the people coming in. Amy says it's only been what, like three minutes since we showed you and another 15 minutes is gone on the virtual queue reservations. We're starting off by heading to the right from the zoo entrance. And this is gonna head towards the Australian uh, koala area, as well as the urban jungle. The primary reason for going to this direction first is that you see James's ears. He has giraffe antlers. The giraffes are in the urban jungle. So we wanna make sure that he gets to see his animals here this morning. On our left, we are passing the bus terminal for the bus tour. This is a free bus tour at the San Diego Zoo. If you have never been to the San Diego Zoo, it's a good one to consider doing as it gives you an, an overview of the entire zoo. And it is about 45 minutes long. Again, it's free and it's just a great little bus tour to go and do. Amy and the boys were here the other day and Amy said that they moved the Tassie or something? There's a wombat right here, but the Tassie is usually straight ahead here, Tasmanian devil. And there's still, it says the devil's in the details on the wall there. But Amy says the sign over here is now Parma Wallaby. And right there is that wallaby. And this used to be where the Tasmanian devil was. And on the left side of the exhibit was another area where the Tazis have often been able to come out. And Amy says that uh, there's another item or animal here now. That is the brush-tailed batong. Now from the top of the hill here, straight ahead is Sydney's Hangout, which is a food location. You can get to Panda Ridge by heading down the bear trail and uh, it's actually past like there, there's a food area when you get to the bottom of this hill and it's actually past that but we're not ready to go down there just yet uh we want to go over here around this side of sydney's hangout because that is where we're going to find the giraffes we actually just renewed our annual passes for the san diego zoo about a month ago we had let them lapse back in february because we knew we weren't gonna be able to come for a while, a very busy schedule of different things going on. And uh, so we let them lapse, we just renewed. This is my first visit back since at least like January. And I, I'm, I'm super excited to be back. I highly recommend a zoo membership if you live locally or close enough, where you plan to go like twice a year. It is definitely financially smart to do that. A trick that my family and I do to make it even like better is that I have the wildlife premium pass and Amy has the San Diego resident pass if you happen to be local. And the San Diego resident pass is cheaper, but it doesn't have the same level of perks that the wildlife protector premium pass does. So if one person has the higher level pass, your family can take advantage of those perks and then everyone else gets the more affordable pass. That is actually a trick that we use for Disney. We use for every theme park that we go to. We, I have the highest level pass and my family usually has the step below mine so that we can save some money while still taking advantage of the bigger discounts. 
James has always loved giraffes as long as I can remember. But uh, he saw this TV show on Disney Plus for Animal Kingdom, and he saw that zookeepers can take care of giraffes. And ever since he saw that, he, he doesn't want to be an astronaut or a fireman or a police officer like most kids tend to want to be. No, he wants to be a giraffe zookeeper. Hello, Mr. Giraffe. Or Mrs. Giraffe. Why is it we come over here and they all go over there? I know. They're like walking away from us. That one's got his tongue hanging out. <laughs> so the guy here who has his tongue sticking out, it looks like part of his lower jaw is missing and that's why his tongue sticks out because he can't fully bring it back in. Um, that's just, just our guess. We're walking around some of the other exhibits around the urban jungle area at the moment and right now you're looking at the rhino exhibit but the rhino does not appear to be out. Over here is like a combination cheetah and dog exhibit. They have the, the two together. They're like companions. I don't see either one of them out either. So one downside of coming super early in the morning is that not a lot of animals might be out, but it's something that you have to do if you want to sign up for that virtual queue for Panda Ridge. And we're checking at 921 and it's out to 1145 at 921. That's not too bad if you showed up here at opening. Um, it looks like at least on a weekday you should be able to get a spot. One of Amy's friends came to the zoo yesterday and she said she got here at 10 a.m. and all of the reservations were gone already. So we're gonna, again, keep a continual eye on this. It'll probably be worse on weekends. Uh, Panda Ridge does close at 3.30, even though the zoo is open until nine o'clock. The Panda Ridge closes at 3.30. The last virtual queue reservation to get in is 2.45 to three o'clock. Here's a koala. He's awake. He is awake. It's amazing. They're not usually awake. He's chowing down on some food. I feel like koalas sleep 20 hours a day, something like that. Yeah, it's so something they insane. Eat and then sleep. And then sleep. And so, then sleep and then eat. So if you get to see a koala awake, it is a rare occurrence. And here's yet another koala that is awake. So it seems to be the trick is to come in the morning for the koalas, even if a lot of the other animals may not be available. <laughs> We're gonna go through Africa Rocks, which I believe if I remember right, this area opened in 2017. So it's not like super duper new anymore, um, but it is one of the newer areas here at the San Diego Zoo. And we've got some baboons. <laughs> Baboon butts. Oh, wow, there's a lot more of them than I thought there were. <laughs> there's a cra crazy amount of them. Now, this path actually splits. If we wanted to go see the elephants, we would want to head off to the right there. And maybe we'll go see those elephants eventually at some point today. We haven't been here in a while, so we may want to, like, poke around and spend longer than what we just usually do. But um, the panda exhibit, Panda Ridge, is going to be at the bottom of the hill, like we showed you earlier. And this path right here will go through the primary area of Africa Rocks and will take us to the bottom of the hill, right down by the pandas. Our virtual queue time is in 20 minutes, so this is perfect for us to just walk along this path until we get down there. Here is another viewing area for those baboons. It's just the lower viewing area before we were up on the hill. Now, there's even more of them down here. There are so many baboons in this exhibit. And I mean, look at this wide open viewing space. It is awesome. I just think this area is absolutely gorgeous. I love walking through it. I, I love zoos. <laughs> I, I primarily like this zoo because I enjoy like the scenery and the foliage and the way everything's laid out. It's just, it's a great zoo. But perhaps my most favorite feature of this area, the waterfall. And you can go see the backside of water. There's Benjamin right now, he's coming out. 
We are kind of blowing through these exhibits now because we're about five minutes away from our return time to go see the pandas. Of course, Benjamin is like super excited, beyond excited. <laughs> Once you exit Africa Rocks, you actually come across the Pandy area. So here's Huame Cafe. This has been here for quite a while. And uh, you'll notice the, the big elevator there uh, and the bridge that crosses over from one side of the zoo to the other. Uh, straight ahead in this red building is the Panda Shop, which we will definitely have to check out uh, once we are done going through the Panda Ridge area to see if there's any other merchandise. I'm sure there's plenty of Panda merchandise in here as well, but the entrance to Panda Ridge is going to be down this direction. Oh look, Benjamin, Panda Bubble Wands! He actually has a Panda Bubble Wand, but it's been so long, I tried to change the batteries yesterday and it was all completely corroded and it won't work. Pandas are back at the San Diego Zoo. As we approach the Panda Ridge area, we're curious as to how this works. I do believe they have a physical standby line as well, if you don't get the virtual queue. I mean, at this point in the morning, all the like there's still reservations available but um they're they're for after like one o'clock at this point and so if you're not going to be here you'll you'll probably want to do the standby line if that's the only option but um i let's take a look at the, the standby line here as we're getting close so this is the main exhibit right here and the pandas are right on the other side of that wall and then to the right of the um, black stanchions here. This is the standby line. So we're gonna show you just how long it is. It is uh, about 9, like 43, something like that. Uh, our virtual queue is for 9.45, but again, this area doesn't open until 9.30 in the morning. Uh, I'm sure some people might just come straight down here at nine and get in line. I, I'm not like, positive on that but it does appear to be moving so they're still letting people in standby uh, amy had heard that they were only letting people in standby if folks didn't show up for their virtual queue reservation and it like opened up a slot but um i don't know if that's the case because i still am seeing this move uh but we're we're getting ready for um wow what is this line so this is the virtual queue line i guess but they don't, they don't even have it open at the moment. This is strange. Maybe, maybe they don't have a virtual queue for 9.30. And so 9.45 is like the first window. I don't know. The virtual queue line looks longer than the standby line. How does that, that does not make any sense whatsoever. So at 9.49, while we're waiting in line, we thought we'd check on the uh, virtual queue windows and it is out to 1.15 at the moment. So they're not completely gone, uh, just a couple of windows, but 9.50. It has been uh, 10 minutes since we got in line. It's 9.55 and we are about to uh, scan our QR code here. Just an observation with the standby line is straight ahead and they have a rope across it. Um, so standby is not going in at the moment. It is just virtual queue. And then the line goes all the way through here and we'll time how long it takes. So you might be right. They don't take any standbys so long as there's people in the virtual yeah, queue line. That's what I'm thinking. That's what um, our friend got told too, was that like the standby is like, a, oh, too bad. You might get in to see them. You probably won't. So. Um, like, what do you think the wait would be? I have no idea. Um, because even this had a pretty long line. So, I mean, word of advice is just get here early in the morning before opening or at opening and... Do the virtual queue. Do the virtual queue. Another observation here. So, right through there is the last person in the uh, 945 to 10 window. And then this is all... Um, they roped it off. And the 10 o'clock people are now lining up. So, um, if you had a window, like you were here too early, they wouldn't even let you get in line. And then I guess once these virtual queues go through, um, they'll start letting more standbys in until 10 o'clock when they start letting these virtual queue folk in. Amy was like, I see one, I see one. I was like, I don't see it. But then she pointed it out. <laughs> you can see his head there. They have a little photo spot here. They took our photo and then they handed us this postcard. And it's got a little QR code on it that we can scan and uh, see our photos online. 
uh, it does say you can view your photos. I imagine that you have to pay for those, but it says claim your free video gift with this postcard. So you can hand them this postcard and get a video gift. We are still in line here waiting to get to a closer look at those pandas, but um, while the pandas were gone, they had the red pandas here. And the red pandas are actually still here, just in this rightmost exhibit. You can see that little red furry blob is him. Not moving around at the moment, but uh, that's the best we can look at. You can see his great big bushy tail there. Well, they do have this whole big exhibit area, but I don't see any of them in it at the moment. We've just got that guy hanging over the wall up there. We're super excited for Benjamin's reaction to seeing his favorite animal. Uh, the pandas left when he was like just a couple of months old. So this is his first time really seeing them that he's going to remember. Fun. What do you think, Benjamin? Fun. The fun. fun. Is he cute? Say the funnest thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Does he look like your stuffed animal? Here's just another look at the red panda exhibit. And again, he's up in that tree there. He's trying to They did let us down. know that the pandas are four and five years old. So these pandas weren't even born yet whenever San Diego Zoo last had the pandas. Assuming we have Yun Chuan and Shin Bao. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly. So they said the one back there was Shin Bao. Uh, that is the female, and we're moving on to the male's habitat now. And for that, we have to go up around the corner, so it's a little bit more of a wait. Benjamin wants you to know that his, his panda is eating the bamboo. We are entering the next viewing area, and we can see Yun Chuan, uh, the male, straight through there. Uh, it looks like, I mean, he's in reflection at the moment, but um, it looks like he might be behind a rock. So there's perhaps a little bit better of a view of him. Uh, we definitely had a, a better view of the other one. Um, Xing, Xing Bao, I think is what they, they said her name was. Um, and they did say that both of these pandas are actually the grandchildren of the panda that we had here at the San Diego Zoo before. Don't ask me to remember her name, but they said that she was here at the San Diego Zoo for 20 years and she actually birthed their mother while she was here. Here's a look at his face since we can't actually see it. <laughs> We've got perhaps a bit better of a view around this way. At least we can see part of his face. There, that's much better. Oh, he's scratching his foot. <laughs> and yawning. <laughs> so cute. Oh, oh, he's oh, moving. Oh. He's moving. Here he comes. He's moving. <laughs> oh, he relocated. And oh, now he's still moving. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, there he goes. He's coming back around. <laughs> There he goes. <laughs> Benjamin's so excited. <laughs> I think we got fortunate because he just went right back to where he was and flopped again. <laughs> That's super fun. Uh, so cute. Oh, there he goes again. This is a movie spot. As soon as you exit the area, you do come across the snack pagoda. And they've got some snacks off to the left, but you can also uh, take a look at your photos on the right. And we did go ahead and purchase the photo package. I wanted to show you what's in here. Here's that postcard again. Uh, and this was $35 before tax. We get um, these, so this is a, a smaller photo that you can, of course, cut out. And then this is probably like more of like a five by seven size that, that you can cut out. But the biggest photo and the, the prime one, the premier one, is gonna be this eight by 10 here. 
And uh, we thought we'd get this because, well, we wanted to show you what they do. So even though you saw the wall in the background, they cut you out of the wall. Did a pretty good job with it too, because it wasn't like a green screen. And then, um, you know, Benjamin was in his panda shirt and with his panda. And this is just a nice little photo. Uh, they do let you look at this. They actually print all these out for everybody before you even show up. So if you just want to go over and you want to look at them and see what your photo looks like, decide before you buy it or not, you can. For an additional $5, you can also purchase the digitals uh, for, for, well, for $40 then uh, before tax. We just got the, the physical prints. So that's fine for us. So let's talk about the process for a minute. Uh, you saw a bit of it. We got in line at 945 and we were pretty much at the back of our line. So they, they must allow people to start queuing up at least some early, yeah, but like... they said, I think, that you can... Oh, like before? Yeah. I think it was like five minutes before. Because okay. Because they said they weren't letting the next group... Um, start lining yeah. up until I think it was five minutes before 10 or something. So we tell you that so that you don't show up like a half an hour early, even for the virtual queue and think that, oh, I'm going to get in line. Yeah, because they were telling, there was somebody there for 10 and they were like, oh yeah, you can't line up yet. Go look at the leopards. Yeah. Um, so then 9.45 is when we got in line. I think I said 9.55 is when we scanned our QR code. We were exiting the Panda exhibit at 10.15. So it was 20 minutes from the moment we scanned our QR code to the time that we left. Um, you did get to see both pandas, two different exhibits. So they, it was kind of like spaced out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you got to see things as you go on. It's not like everything's at the end. Yeah. So that's nice. I actually like their, how they've redone the exhibit because you know, at first we were like, how did they expand it? And it's because instead of having both pandas like smack up next to each other all the way at the one end one is yeah. at the beginning and one is at the end and their exhibits look really nice like they've yes. redone them and they look like they have lots of room to move around in there like they look really nice uh, they weren't they weren't shoving you forward at all. They weren't pressuring you or pushing you or telling you to keep moving. There was nothing of that. People were taking their time, doing what they wanted. But everyone, for the most part, was really courteous. Nobody was, like, hogging up space or time or anything like that. I felt like uh, people kept moving slowly. But it, it also, I didn't feel rushed at all. I felt like, we, you know, we could take as it much was time nice, as we wanted. Yeah, like, people were stopping. Like, we took a couple pictures of Benjamin in front of um, the first panda. And nobody was like, oh, keep moving or anything. Uh, so it was really nice. I, I definitely recommend doing the virtual queue if you can. Uh, we really liked it. Benjamin loved seeing the pandas. And uh, now we're going to go check out that other panda shop and see if uh, there's any fun merchandise. In fact, that's where we were just standing was uh, some little plants right next to it. But this is the panda shop. This has been here. Even when the pandas were gone, the panda shop was still here. Uh, but there's just loads of panda merchandise. Ooh, this is like spirit jersey material. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, the, oh, look, yeah, it's the San Diego Zoo Spirit Jersey. I am seeing a lot of the same merchandise that we saw up at the uh, Front Street store area there. I don't remember what the name of that store was called. But they do have a couple of other t-shirts here that we did not see up there. This is what I was looking for up at the other store. This is like the San Diego Zoo's like signature style of cup. They have these types of cups in like six or seven different animals. And I was looking for a panda one up there. They had the other animals up at the other store, but not the panda one. And this one looks really nice. Uh, $21.95 for the panda mug. They also have this mug, which is super cute. And this is more of like what I would use as an ice cream bowl. Uh, it's nice and wide. My mother would love to know that they have lots of snow globes. She collects snow globes and they have a whole bunch of them. <gasps> Look at the cute sticker. Amy's trying to figure out if we can put this anywhere like for Benjamin. It's really nice. Now we're gonna grab a quick bite to eat from the Hua Mei Cafe. It just opened up at 10.30. Here is a look at their menu and it is quite expensive. So uh, Amy actually brought lunch for the kids and she and I are just gonna split an entree to tide us over to later. If you're coming to the zoo and you wanna save some money, pack lunch for the kids. It's a, it's, it's a viable option to help save some money. They also have salads, wraps, and a couple of kids meals. There's one of those tour buses going by right now, if you're curious. Um, the the double-decker buses, and they tell you all about the zoo. It's a guided tour. And here's a look at our Szechuan beef. Now, I gotta say, my initial reaction was, for 19 bucks, this looks really, really small. But they changed the way that they box them up. They used to put them in those, like, typical Chinese boxes. And I feel like it's possibly the same amount of food, and it looks maybe deceiving, 
this well, this is possible like to, to fill us up. I usually can't even finish one of these myself, which is why I'm splitting with Amy. And uh, we'll, we'll get some more food later when we leave the zoo. Uh, so finished up lunch and uh, it definitely wasn't filling for two people. No, not quite. Not quite. Um, so could have gone maybe the egg roll side though. Like if you didn't want to pay for two full oh, entrees, do like this and then the side of egg rolls for I think it's like five fifty or something because that comes with two. It's, it's, tonight, it's yeah. a potential option. Um, definitely, definitely not quite enough for two people though, all by itself. So what happens if you don't get a virtual queue and the standby line is too long and you don't want to wait in it? Is there another way to see the pandas? There might be, and it's called this big bridge. So uh, they have an elevator here, but the kids really want to take the stairs. So we're going to walk up these stairs. Uh, we actually did these stairs. It's like 102 stairs. We did these stairs as preparation to go to Diamond Head when we went to Hawaii last year. We wanted to prove um, that the kids could handle a lot of stairs because there's like 200 stairs to get to the top of Diamond Head or something like that. And uh, they did great. They loved hiking Diamond Head too. As we're climbing the stairs here, it does not look like you can even see very well because of the treetops. I mean, potentially if they were at the front of their exhibit, you'd be able to see them, but I don't even know where they are right now. And it does appear that there are a couple of people up here actually looking for the pandas over the bridge. So from this spot right here, if I peer down over and then zoom all the way in, I can actually see uh, Yun Xuan. So there he is. He's chowing on some bamboo next to his little pond. It's honestly not a bad view. I mean, he's just sitting in the right spot. If I zoom out, you can see that uh, there's a good chunk of his exhibit that is covered in trees. So you'd have to be in that one little visible space. They did tell us that pandas eat 40 pounds of bamboo daily. And that's because of how little nutritional value it contains. So much so that they also said that when their babies are born, they're the size of a stick of butter because they cannot develop any further due to the lack of nutrients. They said it is the largest difference between an adult and a baby and the animal kingdom with the adult weighing more than a thousand times more than the baby. Uh, another option to see the pandas potentially is to take the Sky Fari, which is this Von Roll Sky Bucket system here. Uh, and we're gonna take that back to the front of the park. We are gonna leave now. As much as I'd love to spend some more time at the zoo today, we do have some other things that we need to do. We were just coming in to see the pandas. And uh, so we're gonna take the Sky Fari, show you that uh, enjoyable ride that you should do. It is free for uh, guests with tickets, of course. So, I mean, anybody that's here. <laughs> I don't know how you wouldn't have a ticket, but that's what they, they always say. Free with admission. Oh, and it's probably helpful to tell you that that 4D theater is right across from the Sky Fari station as well. Not the one at the front of the park, the one at the back of the park, but if you wanted to see Voyage to the Moon, that panda show for $8 a person, it is located here, and the 4D theater is back that way. There's a little bit of a line up here, but usually this station, this time of the day, does not have that long of a line. Now, the station at the front of the park uh, will get a very long line first thing at open. Um, it it, the Sky Fari doesn't, doesn't start right when the park opens. It's been a while since we've been here, so I can't remember exactly when it does, but I want to say like 10 or even 10.30. You've ridden backwards a lot. Mm -hmm. On the day we went to Disney World. And oh look, you can see an airplane. And the city of San Diego. Gorgeous view from up here. You can see lots of people over there. Amy said the other day when she was here, they had the, the walls all barriered off because the pandas weren't open yet. And they didn't want people to look at the pandas from the bridge before it was open. The stairs were blocked off, the bridge was blocked off, the restaurant was blocked off, like everything over here was blocked off. And here we go, here is a look at their exhibit. 
I I didn't see a panda from up here. Yeah, definitely the bridge was uh, the bridge was a better deal. But that doesn't mean you can't see other animals. I just saw some gorillas or something right there. Uh, I didn't pull the camera up in time, I think, but uh, you might be able to see some of them there. Did they move the gorillas? No. no? That's the normal gorilla spot? I've just never noticed you could see that from up here. One of the aviaries right there. We got off the Skyfari and I want to show you the line for the other side of the Skyfari at this time of the morning. Uh, this is what you're looking at right here. It's, it's all the way out here and it goes. So the line goes from out there all the way around here and up there. And this is at 1120 in the morning. The Skyfari spits us out back on Front Street, which is right next to the zoo entrance and exit. The entrance is a little further down that way, but the exit is right here. And before you go to the exit, there is another store and it looks like they have tons of panda merchandise in here too. Sounds like uh, the kids want to go look at it. What? <laughs> Benjamin just, wow. <laughs> oh, a kid's size of the spirit jersey. What? Easily distracted by pandas. It's toddler size. We need one that's like adult size. Yeah, like kid, a size. kid size, not that not is, toddler that size. Ah, <laughs> that's so cute. We popped out of the zoo here and there's a long line uh, right outside and you might think maybe that's the to, to get in. No, that's just to buy tickets. Do yourself a favor and buy tickets online. You'll save quite a bit of time. I didn't even know about this, but Amy just pointed out that right next to the restroom in the entrance area here, there are four kiosks where you can also purchase tickets. It's credit card sales only, no discounts or coupons, but you can buy them there as well. And that's it for our time here today at the San Diego Zoo seeing those pandas. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, I'm always happy to answer those. So please drop them in the comments below. I want to make sure that your trip to the San Diego Zoo is an enjoyable one. Uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you'd like to see more attractions in Southern California, primarily Disneyland, but we do other things too. Thanks for watching and we will see you again next time.